I don't want a house, my dream house. I can't afford my dream house, but I can draw it. Today, I'm gonna to be taking you step-by-step step using Affinity Designer to create my dream house. Affinity Designer is a vector art program that is available for Mac, Windows, and now the iPad. I'm gonna be going pretty quickly through some of the features in this. It's hard to cover everything in a 10 to 15 minute video. But if you wanna go slower and really master and learn everything about Affinity Designer, I've got some courses over on Udemy and there's some discount codes in the description below. Anyway, on with the tutorial. The first thing that I do is I look for photo references. Part of it is finding homes that I think look cool. And when I find stuff that I like, I start dissecting the geometry of those houses. I wanna figure out why I like what I like. What are some of the details on the windows? What does the siding look like? How far apart are the elements of the house, like the windows and the doors? Do they align? Where are some of those similarities? Once I start to get some of those ideas collected, I start to do really rough sketches. The idea here is to get some ideas down really quickly, not to spend a lot of time on the details. Just finding my favorite elements from some of those houses and mushing them all together, making Franken houses. This is where I think that geometry that I mentioned before comes into play. If I bred two cats, sorry, bred two cats, you're not gonna just grab parts from one, grafting it onto the other. No, we want a natural, organic looking kitty or house. We want all the elements to look like they belong together. With our houses, I like to make the windows the same height or the same width across the house. I want the windows on the second floor to line up with the windows below them on the first floor. Or simple things like making the width of the outer window sill consistent all the way across the window and making that consistent across the entire house. Well, let's take a look at this sketch. When I break it down, this is made up of basic shapes, squares, triangles, the occasional arc of a circle, even the windows or the porches just have different line widths. They're basically small skinny rectangles. So when I take this sketch and I move it over to Affinity Designer and I start to recreate it, that's what I do, is I just start blocking in all of my shapes. At this early stage, I'm not really sold on colors. I'm just grabbing anything. I do try to limit myself to say four or five colors at this point, and I'm looking at the contrast between the colors more than the colors themselves. Now at this point, if you're wondering, how do I pick out cool colors? I do have another video where I talk about that. That's a little too in depth to go into in this video, but I'm gonna link that up at the end, in the end screen. So if you do want to check that out, I've got some ideas. One of the things I do like about vector art is how easy it is to recolor and modify once it's drawn. In fact, if you want to get fancy, you could even use global colors so that when you change one color, every color that's attached to that global color will change at the same time. Once I get those basic blocks into shape, I might copy and paste my house several times over and shrink it down. And then each one of those houses that I have, I'm going to try out some different color combinations. I like to do this before I start mocking in all the detail, because once you do, it gets a little harder to fiddle with the colors. Once I decide on my color combinations, I can focus in on that one and start to add some details. For now, I'm going to focus in on just one window. Like I said before, I want to keep the width of the edges around the windows consisted on all four sides. I can add things like little line separators inside the windows to add interest, and I'm going to make those a little bit thinner than the outsides of the windows. Some windows might have a ledge, and when you think about that, that's just another box going underneath the window. Maybe there's little pieces of wood holding up those ledges. Again, those are just a couple boxes, the same width, underneath that window. Shutters? Just one big box with a bunch of smaller, narrow boxes evenly distributed across it. And usually I just shade those smaller boxes a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. I make it subtle. Once I have those base shapes in place, I can start to add shadows, and this is going to add some depth to my window. Under the window, I might add a little bit of a shadow, maybe a little off to one side as well. I'm going to also add that shadow to my shutters. The more something sticks up, off the side of the house, like this little platform under the window, the bigger of a shadow that's gonna get underneath it. Maybe I also add a little bit of a shadow on the inside of the window. In fact, this is glass. So what I can do is I can add a little bit of a reflection. To do this simply, I'm just gonna create a bunch of lines that are a slightly lighter color, and then I'm gonna tilt them at a 45 degree angle. Now you can see here what's happening is they're going outside of the bounding box of the window. Now I can manually go in and edit those, but there's a faster way to do that. I'm gonna grab those layers that make up the reflection, and I'm gonna drag them over the inside box of the window. 
When I let go, what happens is it creates a clipping mask. That means anything outside of that box, you're not gonna be able to see. And as I get going, all of these details are starting to add up. As you'll notice, I'm not going out and grabbing different colors every time I'm doing something. If I add a shadow, I make it a little bit darker. If I add some kind of element or reflection to something, I make it a little bit lighter. And oh look, coconut's in the window already, hey buddy! Once I get my window set up, I can duplicate that over and over again as I need it. The cool thing thing about vector art is once you create something, it's really easy to edit and modify it. In Affinity Designer, I can click on all these shapes at the same time and convert them to curves. And what this is going to let me do is it's going to let me use my white arrow, aka the node tool, to drag over and select the points I want. And I can use that to expand the width of my window. And as you see, I grabbed the shadows, I grabbed the highlights, I grabbed everything doing that. I do have to do some things. For example, I had to change the reflections in the window a little bit after doing that, and I had to change where those middle lines were crossing. And oh look, with a wider window, we can now see Cinnamon and Pepper Paw. Hi guys, welcome to the party. The outside of my dream house is special. It looks like it's just made out of stone, but that's just to the untrained eye. It's actually a special claw-friendly fiber so the kitties can use any part of the house as a scratching post. And the wood paneling that I'm putting on the side of the house is climbable to the kitties, not me. The wood panel? It's just a whole bunch of boxes put together that are slightly different shades of color. Like I did on the window, I'm going to make another mask. I'm going to select all those wood panels, and I'm going to place them inside of a layer, creating a mask and cutting out all the parts that I don't need. Easy peasy. Some of the details are more organic, like the catnip shrubbery that I have placed along the bottom of the house. For that, I'm just using the pen tool to draw it out. If you have a drawing tablet, you could use the pencil tool instead. Or the rodent holes I have here on the grass. With over 340 cats living on the premises, is we're probably gonna have to import more rodents. Cross that bridge when we come to it. The fence in the background is just a series of lines, really narrow boxes. Details like the security camera are a series of boxes that I put together and then rotated a little bit to point down so we can see when the animal protective services are coming. They've already taken sugar plum and nibble pelt and they're not taking anyone else. Nobody takes my kitties, nobody. <sighs> okay. And a lot of these details, once they're drawn, can be duplicated over and over again. Maybe you shift the color or shift the angle that they're placed at. These mounds that you see here are weight-activated landmines. The cats are too light to set them off. Well, most of the cats. Beatrice, Fluff Nugget, and Fur Knuckles, they're on diets. But they're indoor cats anyway. I don't know, this is one of those features in my house that I think is going to take some more thought. One of these landmines could take your leg off to the knee, and it's something that we've got to consider when we're bringing in the grounds crew. I'll probably have them sign some waivers or something like that. I gotta legal zoom all this. Anyway, what would you put in your dream home? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.